What's going on everyone? CJ back here with a brand new episode of the SFL. That is right, the Smalls Football League. And here in week three, I got a lot of great stuff cooked up for you guys. Still trying to figure out how to play defense though, as we have allowed 40 plus points in each of the first two games to start this season. Guess it makes for good content for you guys, but uh, does not make for good blood pressure numbers for your boy. But Defense aside, today we got two new subscriber wide receivers joining the league. And speaking of subscriber wide receivers, we play one today as we take on the Portland Destroyers in the AFC West. They got wide receiver subscriber Alexander Klobleck. Shout out at Honey Badger on YT in the comments down there. We take on his squad today. We got to take a look at this Portland Destroyers roster. We got to check out our new subscribers. And we also have our first subscriber player going up to Superstar Dev as well. We got a lot to get into today. Cue the intro, man. And before anything, I just want to shout out my guy, Bobby Donuts on the Albany Argonauts. Shout out at our Jesus 1111 down there in the comments. He will be moving up to superstar dev by becoming a coach level on my channel memberships. And Bobby was already a force to be reckoned with, but now he gets the spin cycle and also the goal line back ability as well as that superstar dev and Bobby if you want different abilities please let me know this is what I gave you to start seems like a pretty good idea to me and Bobby on the Albany Argonauts should be one of the better halfbacks in the league and just a reminder guys if you would like to join my channel memberships check them out here on my page there's two levels one level gets you superstar dev the other level gets you superstar x-factor dev for your player as well as a bunch of other cool perks Go check them out there on the channel. And if you would like to support me, it's only two to three dollars per month. You get to support a content creator that you like, and you also get some nice, nice bonus perks to you and also to your subscriber player. And joining subscriber QB Lucas Thomas here on the Boulder Rockies in the AFC South, we have wide receiver Austin Lucas. Gonna be the wide receiver number two behind Christian Kirk. So shout out at Austin Gutierrez. Down there in the comments, star dev, which is what you start at, your subscriber player starts at. And man, I just cannot get over these uniforms. I am in love with them. I kind of want to do a main franchise series with these Boulder Rockies just because I love those uniforms that I designed so very much. But Austin here is 5'11", 195 out of Texas. And he is a pretty good wide receiver. Got that 94 speed, 94 acceleration combination. A nice little rhyme there. Nice rhyme. And also 93 agility as well. Can run the routes pretty good. Uh, got some good spectacular catch ratings. So basically teams playing these Boulder Rockies don't let Austin Lucas catch the ball in open space because he just might make you pay. Savannah Spirits in our division here have a subscriber QB and now also two subscriber wide receivers. So George Smith was already on this team and they just added another Smith, which would be DeAndre Smith out of Georgia. So shout out at Grimsley Cole in the comments. 5'10", 180, a deep threat type of receiver. And with speed like that, he's going to be turning opposing DBs into spirits. 99 speed to go along with 95 deep route. Everything else, fair to Midland. Nothing, you know, nothing terrible. But that speed combined with that deep route running ability, if DBs press up on him and he wins, which it looks like he's he may win a lot, it could be a house call more often than not. I love these uniforms as well. Again, created by me. I'm sure you guys know that, but all these teams go download them. They're on the download center. And we do have to play the Spirits two times per year. One, the first time coming up in, I want to say two episodes. So we're going to see these guys very, very soon and make sure you don't miss that as that one should be a good one. Get a quick look at this uh, Portland Destroyers roster. Of course, if you don't know, I play as the Tuscaloosa Terminators, and we are taking on Portland Destroyers with a subscriber wide receiver on this team. They got Jared Goff under center. Okay, so not a bad option to go along with Aaron Jones. So that's funny for a Lions quarterback and a former Packers running back now united on the same squad. Patrick Ricard, I mean, as far as fullbacks go, he's <laughs> he's probably one of the best options. Him, 
Probably Kyle Juszczyk better than him. But receivers, man, oh man, are they stacked. They got Keenan Allen. They got Michael Thomas. They got Jamison Williams. And of course, the man of the hour is Mr. Alexander Kloblek. He was in the SFL last season and 6'5", 243 pounds out of Miami. He is going to be a just a game wrecker if he, if DBs try to tackle him in open space. He's probably going to truck him six ways till Sunday. Not the fastest guy in the world, but again, I mean, with a size like that and a build like that, give my man a break. But he can run the short route and the medium route with the best of them. He can also catch very, very well. And I mean, 88 speed, you know, it's not anything to trifle with. Not like he's slow by any means, but he is a route technician. And these receivers, man, our defense is already sus as it is. They could have a freaking field day on us today. Tight ends, I got Hunter Henry, Luke Schoonmaker, Anthony Ferkser back there as well. Christian Darisaw is a very reliable, solid left tackle. Anthony Bradford, not so much, still young player, a lot to prove coming in at the left guard position. Josh Myers, not really a great option at center. Cody Whitehair, their offensive line's not that good. And our subscribe, we have a whole entire subscriber defensive line on this Tuscaloosa Terminator squad. We got Austin Kringle, we got Aiden Leslie, and we got Silas Vaden to go along with Jaden Taylor in the secondary. So with an offensive line like this, I mean, the sacks gotta be flowing in today. Demario Davis looking like he's probably the anchor on that defensive squad here for the Destroyers. Baron Browning, okay, a linebacker out of Ohio State. But Patrick Sertan, the second, PS2, one of the best corners in the business, if not the best. The Amador Lenore, pretty good. Isaac Yadam, okay. So defense is, is respectable. Jalen Petrie is a good option at free safety. Darnell Savage, love him, former Packer. He is uh, going to be their starting strong safety to go along with Daniel Carlson, who is my kicker over on the Akron Summits franchise, and also Matt Hack as the punter. And this is your Portland Destroyer squad that we're going to be matching up against today. Going to be back at home at Skynet Superfield. I'm thinking probably next episode, I'll go through some of the subscriber stats. I also got to update the Discord. It's updated for the most part, but still got to update some things there as well. And if we take a look at the uniform combos here, the Destroyer is going to be rocking there white aways with the destroyer logo on the helmet again these were all designed by me guys and also their home jerseys pretty slick with the got the pdx which is the actually the airport uh you know synonym or abbreviation whatever you want to call it for portland is pdx and then i got the ddg 1000s with which is actually a type of destroyer warship and these are just absolutely slick man the DDG 1000 on the legs and also on the helmet as well. We're going to stick with the away jerseys for this one, but I think for us, we are going to rock for the first time ever our sky nets here. So switching up from the traditional pink and gray, and we are going cyber sky net with the red kind of digitized little uh, leg, leg stripes there and arm stripes. So I think that they are pretty slick. But if you guys are fired up for the SFL series and want to see more content and you're loving this series so far, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Join the SFL Discord down there in the description. Become a channel member so you can get your dev tray upgraded and be superstar like my man Bobby Donuts or even Superstar X Factor. But without further ado, guys, let's get on down to Tuscaloosa and get ready for the game. And we are going to get the ball first as Daniel Carlson boots this thing back to us. And, you know, I talk about this a lot, but offense, that ain't the problem. We're putting up tons of points. Bo Nix is playing uh, pretty crazy. A lot of interceptions, I guess I would say. But the yardage, he even may be leading the SFL in passing yards right now. The problem is not the defense. Six and six. I mean, the problem is the defense. I'm sorry. We're putting up points, but we're also allowing tons of points. And I'm not sure my heart can take another crazy game like these last couple games. They've been fun. They've, they've definitely been fun, but man, oh man, have they been stressful. And we are going to start things out here, giving it to probably our best player, Christian McCaffrey, who was actually just placed on IR today. And McCaffrey got a big one trying to shake some ankles, break some ankles there. He was able to break, uh, break Jalen Petrie's ankles. But how about a great pickup of 18, I believe it said, to start this off here. And, you know, if I can just continue to pound the ball, with CMC, that would most definitely be 
ideal. Got to go ahead and ID up uh, the, Mar the mic here as Demario Davis. CMC, can he get some more running room? He had it for a minute, but he was kind of stopped up there by Chris Baswell, the rookie out of Alabama who's here in Tuscaloosa. That'll make it second down. See if this great, great passing attack from Bo Nix can continue. We got some drags here. D-Hop and Tyler Boyd probably going to be my first option. JK, though, we're just going to go to McCaffrey, who's seeing all kinds of action there. He's pushed out of bounds by the veteran Bobby Wagner. And that will bring us into our first third down of the game. I realize the game just started, but still, it still is our first third down. That much is factual. I'm probably looking at D-Hop here or David Najoku. It's going to be Najoku all the way. The Chief catches it with room to roam and tried to truck somebody, but he is brought down there by Darnell Savage. But David Najoku, who's also missing some time in real life as well. He's not on IR. I believe he's day-to-day -day for the Browns. But what a weapon David Njoku is. And he just put that on full display on that dot from Bo Nix. Back on the ground we go. But this time we'll test the outside here with Christian McCaffrey. Needs some good blocks, of course. And we got it. McCaffrey, he may be gone. No. One man to beat there. Not sure who that was. I know Demario Davis. I saw him get out there. Might have been Jalen Petrie, number 38 there. But this offense is cooking for the Terminators, which is really no shock. We've pretty much been cooking all season and putting up 40 bombs left and right, you know, which is much different. If any of you guys watch my um, Akron Summits franchise, that franchise is much more, much more defense heavy. I, oh, God, why did I audible that? Well, we got to go with it now. Come on. I just got to delay a game literally because I just can't stop yapping. I, I saw something there. There was something cooking. I was trying to put uh, triangle. I believe Tyler Boyd on a streak, but I was not paying attention. Still first and that's no negative first five yards for the terms. Okay, well that is very unfortunate, but it's all right, just play through it. And how about PS2 matched up on our tight end and Joku? That is, that's something right there. And I believe Tyler Boyd did not run the route that I wanted him to route. I guess it was an option route. I was looking for him to break on into the inside on the slant, he decided to go to the outside you see there on the screen stick and not it was an option route he just in my opinion took the wrong option but hey what are you gonna do uh second and goal here we're way 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 behind the sticks so just oh we're gonna get sacked aren't we we sure are and what do we have this ball down to like the 10 yard line yeah we're back to the 30 and i mean in a situation like this i'm just gonna go screen pass try to get some of this yardage back so we can Kick a more respectable field goal. Um, I'm not the best field goal kicker. We do got Justin Tucker, which is always nice. And, oh, McCaffrey, <laughs> spin move there for really no reason. And that drive, boy, did that thing sputter out there at the end. And a 46-yard field goal for me is definitely not automatic. So let me shut up right now. I don't know. That one could be off. And if it is. All right. So that is how the episode starts. A lot of offense drove down the field. And yeah, as soon as I started talking, which I have a bad habit of doing, I know, things all went downhill and we end up leaving points on the board. I watch big number 79 there, Alexander Klebleck. And remember, I mentioned this offensive line is not that good. Uh, so we should be able to get back there. Doing a pretty good job of run blocking, if nothing else, I suppose, as Aaron Jones rips off a big one there getting the ball all the way to the 45 yard line we got subscriber aiden leslie we got subscriber austin kringle on the d line we got defensive tackle silas vaden who is now rocking a new number and just need these guys to find a way to get back there and disrupt right. jared goff and i mean what the heck was that threw the ball deep into traffic there hunter henry the tight end comes down with it and our defensive woes continue. All right, let's go press with the blitz here. Going to use her up on Roquan Smith. Got to watch Aaron Jones. There he is. And oh, vicious hit. Time that hit stick beautifully. Of course, Roquan Smith, one of the best tacklers in the business. And he just showed Aaron Jones why right there. So that was a good play by the defense. Let's go ahead and I think we can safely guess pass here. Goff really not much of a threat to take off and run. I mean, what is up with this defense, dude? Week after freaking week, I do not understand it. 
Same exact sliders, too, that I have on my other series here on the channel, Akron Summits Franchise. And this defense is better. Higher rated. Higher rated, even. So, I don't know. Maybe that's just a one-off in this in this uh, matchup here against the Destroyers. But, like, Hunter Henry couldn't have been more wide open. And I don't understand it because we got talent on defense. This is a good defensive squad. But you would never be able to tell that judging by the box score. All right, I'm locking in here, man. Less talky, more scory. How about that? Christian McCaffrey on the screen. That seems like a good idea if our offensive line can hold up for a moment. We're going to dish it off to Christian. Open field. Ah, could not juke Patrick Zertan. If that's a regular, you know, normal dev type of DB, I think that Christian jukes him. But, I mean, that time he wasn't able to. But CMC getting a lot of usage here in this game. And, you know, I don't hate it. He is easily our best player. So let's see who can get open here. I mean, we have the Chief in the middle of the field. His second big catch of the contest. And this looks like it's going to be more or less like most games here so far in this young campaign of the SFL. Shootout, high-scoring game as both teams are racking up the yardage here in the first quarter. Another inside run to McCaffrey. Show me that good block at McCaffrey. He is, oh, the spin move. I love it. He's already at four for 51. And I don't think he has a 100-yard game so far. He got he was on pace last episode to do that. But we just, you know, it, the game turned into a shootout. And a lot of times the game just kind of dictates how you have to play. But Christian looking like uh, this may be his first 100-yard game of the season. Romeo Dobbs, that's picked, isn't it? Yes, it is. And I just can't stop launching picks. Oh, look at the speed from McCaffrey. Going to be able to catch up to Diamador Lenore there. That one looked open to me, to Romeo Dobbs. Check it again here on replay, JK. That's not going to happen. And um, we're probably going to allow the Destroyers to go up 14-0 here in the opening quarter, which is no bueno unless our defense can make a stop. I mean, why would I even think that they could? Marcus May going to tackle Hunter Henry, but he's now at three catches. 453 yards. Do you go man? Do you go zone? I'm just not 100% sure. At this point, I will take whatever works. Uh, it's going to be the end of the quarter. And that's probably for the best because big number 79 there, Kloblek, subscriber receiver Alexander Kloblek, was probably going to be open in the slot. But yeah, 7 nothing. about to probably be 14 to nothing, at least 10 to nothing. And I don't know what to say about that last pick other than it looked like it was going to be open. Um, but it sure wasn't, and Xavier Howard, our corner there, going to use her up on him. That is going to be Keenan Allen for his first catch of the contest, and it is good for a first down. All right, come on. Let's get back there to Goff. Oh, so close. What in the actual? Mm, number zero, man. Who the heck is number zero? Who is number zero on the squad? It's Roquan Smith. Of course, I should know that. All he had to do was put his hand up. It's literally that simple. He had some pressure there on Goff, and all Roquan Smith had to do was get a big paw up in the air and uh, could have, you know, could have been stopped there, picked, whatever, and Aaron Jones just bobbing, weaving through traffic. And the uh, uh, Destroyers get it all the way to the seven-yard line. Came out zone, but let's flip it to man here. Uh, zone doesn't seem to be working too well. Aiden Leslie. Oh, why? I mean, look, dude, this, this, is, this has got to be. No, I'm sorry. I, I'm not taking accountability for this. This has got to be patched or something. I mean, take a look at, I want you to look at Roquan Smith here, number zero, right? Okay, you see him? Goff gets the ball in shotgun. Roquan Smith is right here. Goff releases the ball right here. I mean, look, dude, this game, at least th this is trash. This is pure trash. Goff releases the ball right here. Roquan Smith, number zero. Someone tell me what he's looking at. If you said right at the quarterback, you're right. Goff throws it. Oh, and what's Roquan Smith do? He does nothing. Absolutely nothing. He's looking at the ball. Does not even make an attempt to put a hand up. Nothing. I mean, that, you know, that's not even... You put you put your hand up, you can make a play on that ball. You jump, you could possibly get a pick. And Roquan Smith, one of the best linebackers in the game, and just doesn't even look at the ball. That is a Madden thing right there. And I play Madden, like, 
I like it. I'm, I'm a, I do. I play it all the time. It's all my content's based around it. But that is just grade A, 100% dumpster fire trash. Tell you what's not trash, though, so far is Christian McCaffrey's performance and may just need to kind of lean on him a little bit because 14-0 already here in the second quarter. I mean, that's when uh, ball games can easily start slipping away from you. And look, I got number 71, Trent Williams there. Please set a good block. I mean, in fairness, Trent did. But unfortunately, Graham Glasgow had no interest in following suit. Yeah, this is going to be one of those games, isn't it? I can already tell. Bo Nix, let's go ahead and roll out with him. And does Bo have some wheels? Oh, yeah! I mean, he actually does. Tight roping on the sideline, picking up the first down. I was probably looking to hit the Chief, David Njoku, there. But I didn't really like the way that the uh, coverage was setting up. And... Last thing I want is to throw my second interception of the game. So nice job by Bo doing it himself. We're going to go ahead, come out, shotgun here, roll out. That's honestly so glad that I was hit on that throw. That was probably going to be interception number two. Third and 17, we're going to be dropped for a big sack. And this game is not going how I would have hoped. That much is for sure. Um, so far, our defense is playing like how we're used to our defense playing. But our offense, not so much. And barring some sort of miracle here, I'll tell you what. We're going to give D-Hop a chance. D-Hop can maybe catch it. Oh, what a crazy catch by DeAndre Hopkins. He had one of those last week as well. And that one, uh, just a, maybe even better. I mean, I did see the safety was not playing back there. And DeAndre Hopkins, I mean, had to aggressive catch it. But really, Bo Nix dropped that thing right in the bucket. Okay, so an unconventional way to move the sticks, uh, I will admit. Getting way behind the chains and then firing up a, a deep bomb shot, and it actually works. D-Hop again, open underneath. He's due for a big game. Gets tackled very close to another first down. Test the outside with McCaffrey again. Come on, give me some good blocks. There we go. Christian, it's always Patrick Sertan. He is uh, always there, the last one at the second level to stop CMC. But still another good run, and we got first and goal here on the six-yard line. Only thing that I'm not super happy about, though, is the Destroyers do get the ball back after halftime. We did start with it, of course. So, you know, if we score here and stop them, which God, seems like an impossible feat with this team, man. We score here and stop them. We have a chance to tie it up before halftime. But got to kind of think about scoring a little bit quickly. Second end goal. This could be Romeo Dobbs season here. Let's see. Uh, oh, yeah, baby. It's Dobbs. Yeah, okay. I knew that he or DeAndre Hopkins, one of them, was probably going to get open on the mesh concept. It was just a matter of who. Romeo Dobbs was my first and really only read, to, to be honest, in fairness. But luckily, it did pan out pretty well. And assuming I don't miss this extra point, which I already got one uh, miss kick on my resume today. We are going to tie this ball game up. That one should be right down the middle by J Tuck. It is now. Let's go back on defense. Seven for seven for 73 yards, two touchdowns. Jared Goff, MD, the surgeon out there, just picking us apart in the backfield. And I just can't figure it out. Like, not going to keep harping on it, of course. But like I said, this is a good defensive squad. There is nothing wrong with this defensive squad. There's receiver Alexander Kleblek bouncing off like a pinball. I knew it was a matter of time, man, if they let him catch the ball on a slant or something like that. First defender that tries to lay the wood on him is probably going to be regretting it. Guest pass, shade inside. Got to watch uh, Aaron Jones over here. Austin Kringle will probably be the drop back man in this scenario. Where's Goff going to go? He is going to go out of bounds. All right. So defense did their job. He was sitting back there scanning the field. Nothing really to work with. And Goff, what are you saying? Go for it? You want him to go for it? No. Come on now. Come on now. You're not going to go for it. You're going to punt the ball back to subscriber corner Jaden Taylor, who is also our kick returner as well. Maybe he can make something happen in the return game here. Not so much. Kind of like D-Hop on the streak here. I do see that free safety over there, but it's outside shade. Maybe a quick step drop and sling. Nope, it is going to be Dobbs again. And that time, ooh, thought he hung on to it, but it was a big hit there at the very, very last minute by Jalen Petrie. And that is going to bring up second down. And in this situation here, um, 
I mean, I kind of like screen pass. We got two more downs to work with. Uh, don't need to get all of it. Maybe. <sighs> okay, well, I was going to say maybe I look Tyler Boyd's way. Yeah, that was just a disastrous play right there. Read beautifully by the defense, and that's going to bring up third down. Somebody gets open on these slants, right? I need Christian McCaffrey to stay in the block. But who's blitzing? Uh, really, nobody's blitzing. And that's a dangerous throw by Knicks. And it's picked again. Of course it is. That one's all me. That one's all me. It's Diamador Lenore with his second interception of the game. I hate slant routes. I don't know why I ever call them. Because I hate them. And, yeah, nothing I can say about that one. First one, first pick was, was not cool. Okay? That one... It is what it is. It was me being stupid. It happens. Roquan Smith, can you save the day? Oh, he's back there. Mm. Okay. See how things are going to go today. This tackle there by our corner. Aaron Jones catches it. 21-7. We got our work cut out for us. We got something cooking here. 30 seconds. Big, big deep shot downfield to David Njoku. Actually worked. So we got the ball on the 39 and chance to to do something here if we can just play smart football i like christian mccaffrey on that route mccaffrey catches it and he may actually have some speed to get in he does not bo nicks at 220 one touchdown two picks trying to even up that ledger a little bit and uh should have been recording talking you know before this drive but honestly i was just trying anything <laughs> and here we are down here at the seven yard line so Gotta pay this thing off with some points. That much is for sure. And coach is saying mesh spot again. That worked earlier. Um, this time, put Najoku. Can we put him on a corner route? I kind of like that. And he may actually be my first read. He will not be. It's Pat Fryermuth gonna catch it. And we're gonna go ahead and call a timeout. We're gonna actually go draw play here. Maybe try to fool him a little bit. Which McCaffrey? Hey, it actually worked. Okay, so 21-14, definitely cut it a little bit closer. I was going to be worried going into the locker room if they were up 21-7, to and they get the ball back as well. But 21-14, not the worst thing in the world. Still cannot figure out this defense. That remains a huge question mark, as it always does. But assuming they don't do anything crazy in 13 seconds, we should get into the locker room down seven and that will in fact be your score 21 14 really some missed opportunities i mean we could very well be up on the scoreboard and oh let's watch the halftime show that's going to show me bears versus bears on all three hey what do you know the bears are playing the bears ea sucks dude i'm sorry look i made all 32 teams team builder teams custom teams did a fantasy draft you would think it should be able to recognize that logic but the game just breaks and freaks out. Speaking of breaking and freaking out, if we can't play defense in the second half, I may freak out and break my gosh dang controller. All right, new half of football means new opportunities here. I'm going to probably do some D-line. Oh, there we go. Thought we had a pick. It's a screen. Roquan Smith can't make the tackle. Patrick Peterson can't make a tackle. I was about to jump up out of my seat and do the freaking Macarena if we got a sack because those have been extremely extremely hard to come by in this franchise we're gonna go press blitz though in this situation and i'm pretty much set in the house it's a nice catch there by keenan allen or michael thomas it's keenan allen i feel like one of these times we are gonna get home to golf i'm willing it anyways roquan smith you go ahead and just kind of spy the middle of the field there my friend silas vaden gonna use her up on our big d tackle and i try to jump and I mean, what? It's really not even worth getting, it's, it's not worth getting frustrated over because it's really more funny than anything. Maybe our defense is just too old. We do got some old guys. We got Xavier Howard. We got James Bradbury. We got Patrick Peterson. Like we do got some, some older guys, Marcus May back there too. And uh, that was Xavier Woods, who's actually not the oldest really. And I just hit the kicker. Yeah, I did that on purpose. Take my frustration out on Personal Daniel foul. Carlson. But it's just, engagement. there's no point in getting mad. I mean, these games in this series at least are just going to be shootouts, and I'm fine with that. I mean, like I said, my other series, I don't know if you guys watch it. You should. You definitely should. It's 
my main franchise series where I do all the, you know, scouting and free agent signing and going through the storylines and all this and that. Those games have been in the mid 20s. So I don't know. Same sliders. Uh, it eludes me. But I guess in the SFL, we're just going to be primed for shootout after shootout after freaking shootout. Let's go back to what was uh, working initially at the beginning of this contest, which was the runs to McCaffrey. Going to be searching for some blockers. And I mean, we kind of got him there. Jalen Petrie, he's got to have about 13 tackles in this. He's I mean, we're calling his name. I feel like all the time. And that's, you know, again, that's that's what worked most in the first quarter, really, and the second quarter. So probably going to go back to that a uh, little bit more in this one. Uh, Romeo Dobbs is also working on the underneath routes and actually does fall forward for first down. I haven't gone RPO yet so far uh, in today's contest. So that sometimes works, although I did not like that. That, that could have been a house call, and then you really would have seen me throw my controller. Well, you probably wouldn't have seen it because, you, well, you might have seen like this, and then all of a sudden my camera breaks, and you would have been like, yeah. CJ broke his controller. He said he was going to do it in the first half. He did it, and, you know, it just it just really wouldn't have been a fun time. Uh, these controllers for the PS5, they cost like 80 bucks, man. I'm not trying to be buying an extra controller that much. It is for sure. David Njoku, I need your brother on... Uh, drag route because, yep, that's what I'm going to do. I wanted to hit D Hopper or Dobbs or whoever it was on that corner, but just your boy's a little bit gun shy right now. And I mean, one way to hold opposing defenses or, you know, to keep their points lowered is to have a lot of time of possession. And so far in this game, we are doing just that, or at least, you know, on this drive, a couple drives in the first half, Christian McCaffrey picking up nine. He is an absolute weapon. I don't think I've ever, pl I've never played with CMC really in Madden. I mean, I've, you know, never got him in any of my series, even when I play offline, just messing around. I was, you know, never the Panthers, never the Niners. Those aren't any of my uh, really go-to teams. And, I mean, is that Kyle Juszczyk? <laughs> All right. I mean, that's his teammate in San Fran. That's also our fullback, number 44. I thought that was CMC because he was running like CMC. Newsflash. That wasn't CMC. David Njoku, he might win on the stick route, but I need Christian McCaffrey to kind of clear out some of that mess on the field. We're going to go to the Chief. Please fall forward. He does. Bobby Wagner with his fifth tackle of the game. Uh, David Njoku having a really big impact on this contest here. He's getting involved. He's making some key crucial plays. He may even be up uh, close to 100 yards. And depending on what this line does, he might be... Okay, no... I was going to say he might be the recipient of this touchdown grab. Instead, it's DeAndre Hopkins, who is still searching for his first touchdown of the season. Not going to get it on that one. McCaffrey inside zone. Come on, take me to the promised land. Oh, he got stonewalled at the one-yard line. All right. Interesting decision here. Interesting call. Coach does want us to run, and that's exactly what we're going to do. I mean, come on. Christian McCaffrey, not really a power back, but... I mean, he's Christian freaking McCaffrey. Surely he can pick up one yard and he will do it with ease. So still very much a ball game. About to be 21-28. Don't go anywhere. Maybe go somewhere on this defensive possession because Lord knows I don't want to put you guys through that pain and anguish. But we, you know, have a chance to be in this ball game. Maybe tie or take the lead if we can just buckle down and play some freaking defense. I know... It's coming here. I know we're eventually going to get a sack on Jared Goff. It's just a matter of time. That time needs to be now. Jared Goff looking good in this one, but is it Jared Goff really? Or is it our defense? I mean, Jared Goff's a good quarterback. Don't get me wrong. But I feel like our defense is, is making him look and play a lot better than what he truly is. I think this is going to be a run play, although I'm not even really necessarily convinced. Uh, we'll use her up on Roquan Smith here. That hasn't done us anything. Come on, someone please get to golf. And uh, what did I say earlier? It's not worth it to get upset. That's Luke Schoonmaker, the backup tight end. Getting it all the way down to the 50 in just one play. And I'm I'm not going to talk about it. I'm not going to talk about it. We're going to shade. Oh, no, 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 no. Shade over top here. Come on, Silas. Get back there. Silas, somebody get back. Not going to get mad. Not going to get mad. I told myself it's not worth it. End of the third quarter, Aaron Jones, monster play. Luke Schoonmaker, monster play. Jared Goff, 
making monster plays in this one, or so it appears we're allowing him to do that. 28-21, still a ball game. Don't go anywhere. Should be an exciting fourth quarter coming your way. At a blitzer, it's Roquan Smith, but the thing is, he just, he never gets home. Like, he never gets home on the blitz. There's Alexander Kleblek. I believe that's his second catch of the ball game, right? He had that monster one earlier, I know. Uh, I think that is his second. But yeah, Roquan Smith, he, he never gets home. TJ Edwards, he never gets home either. These are two really good linebackers that we're talking about here. And another catch, another completion to a tight end, a schoonmaker. And Portland has this to the 20 of the Terminators. I'm sending a safety blitz. I don't care. They got a fullback in the game, Patrick Ricard. So we will, again, use her up on Roquan Smith. Oh, thought that was going to be money. And it is it is money. Yeah, it is money. So 35 points for Portland. Our defense is terrible. Still got a chance in this ball game. I mean, there's, you know, close to a full quarter of action to go. But I just, even if we score, which we, which is a very real possibility, like, I would put money on it that we score this drive. The problem is the other team's going to possess the ball, and we just can't find a way to ever stop any team in the history of ever. We're out gaining them in yards, too. We got more total yards than them, but, you know, that, that doesn't really matter uh, because the only thing that matters really at the end of the day is the score. Romeo Dobbs just going to kind of fall to the floor there. Did not want to take that big hit. Hospital ball, even though I got injuries turned off. But, you know, knowing my luck, he probably would have dropped it. So Dobbs having a big game. Dobbs has had a lot of big games for us. He's played great this season. And another guy playing great today is Christian McCaffrey, who is now over 100 yards rushing. That's at least a bright spot. Been trying these last two games to get him there. And it just hasn't happened. So nice to see Christian go over the century mark. D-hop on press. Probably going to be my first read. That safety bit, too. What? That was a... Don't get mad, I said. Don't get mad, I said. Don't get mad, I said. That was a touch pass, man. No way that was a bullet pass. No way. Diamador Lenore with the hat trick, too. No way that was a bullet pass. I'm telling you, you gotta believe me. Believe me or not. I tapped that square button ever so slightly. And that was supposed to be like what it was earlier. But Bo Nix gets literally nothing on this football. Like, he threw it right. D'Amador Lenore run the route. He ran the route. And I mean, really, like, Hop has a step or two. I don't know, man. I hope you guys are enjoying this content. And I hope at the end of this episode that your subscriber player does well. Because this game is definitely not fun for me. This one in particular. Um... Yeah, I don't know. Six minutes to go. We're getting tore up from the floor. Up. Portland probably going to get the win in this one. Did hold them to a field goal. Uh, so our best defensive play, our best defensive drive really comes with four and a half to go in the fourth. I'm doing same thing I was looking at last time, but probably a different result. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, luckily, that wasn't picked, really. I mean, it, you know, very could, very easily could have been if I'm being totally honest. And I mean, at this point, you know, we're just kind of. Stat pad in here. I mean, we're down by 17. Not really a whole lot that you can do with that. Uh, we're going to go to Najoku, though. Nice little pass lead. David having a big game. Six catches for 103 yards. I'll tell you my true goal in this game. Hold the Destroyers to under 40 points. We haven't done that so far in this entire uh, season, this entire series. So even if I got to possess the ball for the rest of this time here, I mean, look, let's be honest. We're not going to score... Even if we could score 17 points in this short amount of time, we can't stop Portland. There's no way. I would bet money on that. So all I want to see is a little bit of progress. Show me, you know, not allowing a team to 40 points. Christian McCaffrey can't hang on. Green pass to CMC, though. Let's keep that clock moving. That's the goal right now. Christian, you're telling me Christian McCaffrey can't outrun old-ass Bobby Wagner. Okay. I mean, Bobby Wagner's good. Don't get me wrong. One of the, uh, you know, members of the Legion of Boom in Seattle back several years ago. So he's good. But you're telling me Christian McCaffrey can't outrun him? Question mark? I don't know. David Njoku, his big day continues. That's the touch pass I was trying to hit to D-Hop earlier. And we are able to connect with the Chief. 
But in the great scheme of things, probably doesn't matter. I don't love this playbook, really, if I'm being honest. We used to be the Buccaneers before uh, relocation. So that's obviously the playbook that we're sticking with. Christian McCaffrey may have 200 all-purpose yards, by the way. He's got receiving yards, running yards. I mean, he's really doing it all. And I'm not making excuses. Please do not take it that way. Um, because, look, I'm... If you guys have been watching me for any period, you know, length of time, I'm not the best Madden player. Like, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and make excuses, but, oh, God, Christian McCaffrey scored on that? All right. I mean, I guess we, we go for the onside kick. We got all three timeouts. Like, it's probably not going to happen. You know, like I said, I, I'm, not, I'm confident that we can score the ball. Coach is saying do a regular kickoff. Speed on. Uh, I don't know. I mean, you know, at this point, like, do a low kick. Maybe get a get a good bounce here. It has to go 10 yards. That's the thing. Um, will it, though? It most certainly will not. I mean, like, that's really legitimately our only shot of winning is to recover two onside kicks. So I tried, but, you know. Probably going to be all she wrote. Show me something, defense. Anything that we can carry into next week. Like, just give me something. A sack, a TFL. I mean, Patrick Ricard just glitched out of reality on that one. Just no clipped. Going to end up in the freaking back rooms if he's not careful. But just show me something. I mean, there, I doubt that Peter Gaffney, the made-up coach here, uh, be, well, because Sean Payton is the new Bill Belichick, I guess, and refuses to, to be in this game. Yeah, I mean, it's whatever. Jaden Taylor, missed tackle there. But, hey, we did hold a team to under 40 points. That has not been done so far this, this year. I know we're only three games in, but maybe some progress. I don't know. We lose by 10. We're going to drop to one and two. Subscriber wide receiver Alexander Kloblek had a pretty good game, I think. We'll check it out here in the stats. But, yeah, man, Teams pretty much do whatever they want on us. Jared Goff, a perfect 158.3 quarterback rating. Uh, only in only missed two passes, 269 yards, and five touchdowns. Meanwhile, Bo Nix goes over 300, which he does every game, but three interceptions, not going to get the job done. Christian McCaffrey had a break. Shouldn't say a breakout game. He's a breakout player already, but for us, a breakout game. 19 attempts, 116 yards, average 6.1 yards per carry. Three touchdowns, and uh, Aaron Jones also kind of got in the mix as well. But yeah, he had, so he didn't have 200 all-purpose yards, but pretty close. Like 177, I want to say. Seven for 66. Najoku had over 100 yards. Dobbs, Hopkins, they played good. Kleblek, Alexander Kleblek had four receptions for 33 yards. So, you know, he had that, that one catch was a monster catch, though. And then the other two were just kind of, you know, short dink and dunk type of plays. But it is the defense, and guys, subscribers on this defense, look, not your fault, man. You guys, I mean, it's the game, right? It's got it's got to be the game. We have no sacks. We have no picks in this game. Phyllis Vaden, though, had a TFL. That's nice to see. So did uh, Shelby Harris and Roquan Smith. And our other subscribers here, Jax Vaden, the linebacker, he had two tackles. Um, Austin Kringle had a tackle. And also, Jaden Taylor had three tackles. What about no stats for uh, Leslie, huh? Okay. So, Aiden Leslie, no stats. But, yeah. Look, it's only it's early on. You guys are going to make some noise, I'm sure. Um, we made some noise last season, our defense in the SFL. So, I'm sure it's just taking us a little while to get there. So, don't fret. There's always next week. But, let's go check out these subscriber stats for the rest of the league here in week three. First game to check out here is our new superstar development player, uh, Bobby Donuts on the Albany Argonauts. They did lose to the Akron Summits, which again, that is my main franchise team on my other series here. So the Argonauts do suffer the L. Summits got Caleb, how about that? Caleb Williams and Bryce Young, two uh, number one overall picks who aren't playing very good. Now, Caleb, only a couple games in, Bryce Young. Yeah, he just got benched. So, uh, and Bobby Donuts, wow. Going up to superstar dev, 12 for 35. Long of seven yards, so you don't like to see that. 
Hopefully it's just an anomaly, but in fairness, it doesn't look like uh, the Argonauts were really even going with the run game really at all. Boulder Rockies get the dub over the Milwaukee Motors, and we got to check on our two subscriber players here. Lucas Thomas, nice game. He outdueled Derek Carr, who is balling in real life, let me just add. Now, only two games in, but God, man. Saints, looking like a Derek Carr resurgence. But Lucas Thomas, 247, three touchdowns. That is awesome to see. And he got his subscriber mate, uh, Austin Lucas, involved pretty heavily seven for 77 no touchdowns those were awarded to uh kyle pitts john mechie christian kirk but yeah austin lucas was all over the field with seven receptions topeka silverbacks and toronto thunderbirds silverbacks get the dub and we got a subscriber qb duel on our hands here so we get a look at Kyrie brooks 323 yards one touchdown and a pick and then jordan baker 175 and no touchdowns and a pick, so kind of a rough game for him, unfortunately, and uh, Silverbacks do get the W, and it looks like Kyrie's favorite target was Puka Nakua, who is also going on IR now in real life, which sucks. I'm a big Puka fan, man. That's just a guy that you root for, but at least in this uh, Madden Simverse here in the SFL, he is still cooking on the field. Rochester Rebels drop to the OKC Eels, who are in our division, and the Rochester Rebels, we do take on we take them on next week and subscriber Chase Kaiser. So we'll see him live in action. But Mason Buchanan here, perhaps outdueled by Kaiser, but not really. Kaiser had a lot more yards at 282 compared to 176. But also the three picks compared to zero. I mean, that is, you know, the ball game right there, essentially. And subscriber running back Grom Briner here, 14 for 60. So not the most yards, but averaged over four per carry and had a big, big touchdown to help propel our division rivals that we're going to see eventually here twice, the OKC Eels, to a victory. Salem Steelhawks get a big, much-needed win over the Kissimmee Crocs here. We got three subscribers on the Steelhawks as well. Quarterback Cameron Moore, 191, two touchdowns, but no interceptions. And I mean, when have you ever seen a stat line like this from Patrick Mahomes? It's got, I don't know the playbook that the Kissimmee Crocs are, are running, but it's got, you figure it's got to be a playbook thing. And then subscriber, not Oreo. Wow, big game for him. Five tackles, one TFL and a sack as well. And then also uh, Daniel THG here had an interception. So that is awesome. These two subscribers balled out here on the Salem Steelhawks to help propel them to a big, big win. Jersey Shore, Pauly D's here get the win. Big win, too, over the Rough Riders of Fort Worth. And Lamar Jackson, of course, is their quarterback. Didn't even really play that good. But, I mean, Tua, I don't even want to talk about Tua. That is a not a joking matter at all. Prayers up for him in real life and prayers up to him in this game because, I mean, that is not, not what you want to see from your star quarterback here. But subscriber Aiden Grau here, no interceptions, four tackles, and also had a big pass deflection as I believe the D's are now undefeated. Oh, we had a close one here. San Jose Industrials dropped to the Juno Snow Owls by one point. I want to say the Industrials were also undefeated too. It was a Matt Stafford, Drake May duel, and uh, they had literally the exact same amount of yards. Drake May even had two more touchdowns as well. Um, so I don't know where the discrepancy, I mean, it was a bat, you know, back and forth game for sure, but we got to take a look at the, uh, receiving stats here of one easy Fuentes, says four for 42, no touchdowns, they flowers and Dalton Knox had those, but yeah, I mean, this was a back and forth contest and snow owls eke out a tight one point victory. Grand Rapids lightning dropped to the Roswell Re revolution. The revolution might be undefeated as well it was a jordan love jalen hurts matchup so shades of uh the opening friday night game here in the nfl in real life and we got a receiver on the lightning here floyd butler four for 27 but he did have a touchdown so that's nice to see floyd butler was uh I believe underutilized i want to say in the other sfl back on madden 24 so nice to see him getting some action uh, but unfortunately, his lightning do drop to the Roswell Revolution of New Mexico. And last but not least, the Savannah Spirits who were facing, we face the Rochester Rebels next episode. And then we face the Savannah Spirits episode after that. And I probably will do one more drop of SFL and then go back to Summit's franchise for an upload. Just because I know I haven't uploaded as much recently. And I do apologize 
I put in a community post, you know, I had some family stuff going on. I know you guys don't want to hear about that, but it's just the reality of the situation. So I'll probably do one, another upload of SFL uh, directly after this one. But subscriber Caleb Hayes here went for 280 and a touchdown. So that is nice to see. And wow, new subscriber DeAndre Smith. Shout out at Grimsley Cole. First game in the SFL. What do you do? You go out and catch nine passes for 125 yards. I mean, that is freaking awesome. And then George Smith also played pretty good as well. Six receptions for 54. So we got the Eagles in our division playing good. We got the Spirits in our division playing good. And the other team in our division, which I'm drawing a blank right now, should be able to go see over here. Um, oh, the Flyers. Yeah, okay. No subscribers there. But the Spirits are indeed undefeated, and so are the Roswell Revolution. And uh, wow, NFC North, man. <laughs> what a division. 0-3 for the Milwaukee Motors, the Dakota Pronghorns, and the Toronto Thunderbirds. Really, the NFC in general. Like, I mean, even the NFC East, every team 1-2. and two. So the fact that we're at one and two, I feel much better about that now. Um, I was kind of worried, but yeah, the NFC doesn't really look so good here to start. But hey, that is going to do it for me tonight, guys. As always, I appreciate you stopping by. I will catch you on the next one. Until then, peace.